Okay, so let us put this in a context. There are over a thousand different languages and dialects that is being spoken in Nigeria alone. And this is besides the dialects that have already gone extinct. So the notion that Africans sold each other is not necessarily accurate without the right context being applied into it. Most people believe that Africa is one place inhabited by one group of people. And that is further from the truth. I covered an inch of how diverse Africa is in a previous video titled, Why are Africans so weird? In this video, I mentioned of how you can find the tallest and the shortest people in the world live in only a few miles apart from each other a place where it is not uncommon to find people that are well over seven feet tall and another place where you can find people with an average height of five feet these are people not only different based on their genetic expression but also the language that they speak so to say that africans enslaved each other is a notion that is far from the truth throughout history there's been no civilization that enslaved themselves for example in ancient athens the athenians didn't enslave other athenians but it was common for them to enslave Spartans and vice versa. When we speak of slavery in regards to Africa, we need to put this in the right context. For example, when the word slave is mentioned, what picture does that paint in your head? Is it a picture of someone in chains with no freedom? Someone who works countless hours, beaten, and hardly referred to as a human being? If that was the picture that was painted in your mind, that's not necessarily what happened in Africa. This only perpetuates a false notion that Africans have been doing this to each other, so it wasn't as bad when Europeans came over and did the same. For example, Mansa Sakra, the sixth king of Mali, was given birth to as a slave. And this makes all the difference. Even though he was born a slave, there was still an opportunity to become the ruler of a nation. But let us apply this to European slavery. This would be the equivalent of a slave in the Americas becoming the next king or the next president, which at the time was impossible. Speaking of Mali, Mali had a constitution a body of principles acknowledged by both the government and the citizens. It is called the Koro Confoga. Article 20 of the Koro Confoga states, do not ill-treat the slave. You should allow them to rest one day per week and to end their working day at a reasonable time. You are the master of the slave, but not the bag that he carries. And Article 5 states, everybody has the right to life and to the preservation of physical integrity. Accordingly, any attempt to deprive one's fellow being of life is punished by death. There are countless artifacts in regards to slavery in Africa. Another example is King Mvemba of Congo. He wrote countless letters quarreling the Portuguese empire for illegally enslaving his people. I'm not here to paint a fairy tale to you because Africans did sell other Africans, not only to other Africans, but also to Europeans. Just the same way Europeans and enslaved and sold each other just like every other civilization did the greeks the romans and so on so in the absence of context to say that africans sold each other is a simplistic senile perspective of viewing what is otherwise a complex problem at the time there was no unifying African body like there is today. No Black Lives Matter, no Black Panther, no NFAC. There was no need for that. It was always Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo, Fulani. Basically, a bunch of people who not only express genetic variations, but also differ in their culture, language, and religious beliefs. Most cultures exhibited a mutualistic relationship and lived peacefully. Others gained immense power and decided to invade neighboring kingdoms, just like every other prehistoric kingdom. For example, during the height of the Roman Empire, they pretty much encroached other neighboring territories and plundered, murdered, and pillaged their way through. But we don't hear the notion of Europeans enslaving other Europeans because there's context that needs to be added onto that. And after establishing that context, the question is, why did Africans enslave each other to begin with? In Africa, slaves were either war captives, criminals, someone who owed a debt, or simply orphans. Like every other civilization throughout history, at the time, West Africa was undergoing its dark ages where various empires were forming and being destroyed simultaneously. Because there were so many ethnic groups groups in one region, most of them fell apart and others formed separate empires based on survival. And the influence of guns from European traders only fueled the conflict. So let's take a closer look on how this conflict played out. I'm gonna start with two of my ancestors, one of which is Princess Sarah Forbes Benetta Amoba Ania. Her name sounds like a melody. She was a Yoruba princess born in Ogun State, Nigeria, and her kingdom was invaded by the Dahomean army. Her parents died in that invasion and she was later 
sold into slavery. Upon her arrival into the New World, she was adopted by Queen Victoria. Aina was recognized because of her exceptional intelligence. During the rise of the Oyo Empire, the Yorubas, which is my people, were complete bullies. Everyone wanted a piece of them because they were growing so large and so fast. And in retaliation, a lot of Yorubas were captured and sold. In fact, there were a lot of kingdoms that were created in order to defend themselves from the Oyo Empire, one of which is Dahomey, the same people who sold Princess Sarah Forbes Benetta Amoba Ania. I just love pronouncing her name. Sarah Forbes. Dahomey was a military state cultivated with a clear purpose to never fall victim to the oil empire. To achieve this goal, they needed every abled body and this was the birth of the Dahomeyan women warriors. Guys, hold up, you don't get it. These were the most ruthless women on the planet. They swore an oath to their king to die facing the enemy. Cough, cough, Yoruba people. They were trained to withstand life-threatening injuries and keep marching forward. Hold up, you've watched Black Panther. Remember the king's soldiers? The women dressed in red that defend their kingdom tirelessly. They were modeled after the Dahomeyan warriors. Don't, Don't freeze. freeze. I Don't never not. freeze. <laughs> They tied the heads of their enemies around their waist to bring back to their king, which they were all married to but had no sexual relationships with because the king respected them as warriors. During the French expansion into Africa, they came across the Dahomeyan warriors and they were getting body bagged for hours. But eventually Dahomey fell in defeat by the hands of the French soldiers. But this was only because France brought with them the foreign legion and machine guns. But the fact that Dahomey were able to hold their ground for hours against a better equipped military just speaks of how strong they were and that was the strength required to not only repel the Oyo empire but also to retaliate. In the book Barracoon, the story of the last black cargo written by Zora Hurston, one of my ancestors by the name of Oluwale Kasola was one of the few people who was captured from Africa to America and also survived past the point in which slavery became illegal in America. He narrates his experience in this book. Guess who captured him? the Dahomeyan army. Now he goes into detail about the Dahomeyan army and I can also go for hours speaking on them but that will take up more time than I am permitted. You guys should check out the book. I'll leave a link in the description to Amazon. The ebook is $12 and the hard copy is $13. The knowledge of our history helps us to understand the origin of our pain. And that is why I do this. To know where you are going, you have to know where you have been. We can no longer afford to navigate this earth without a sense of direction. That was deep, right? I've been working on that one for a while and you can quote me on that. If you thought that was as good as I thought it was, you can scroll down and press that thumbs up button. And if you did not like that, I understand your frustration and the burning desire to vent your anger. So hit that dislike button, not once, but twice. In all seriousness though, I pray that this video has met you well and in good health. I pray that you are safe and that you are currently living the best versions of your life. If you like what you see and would love to see more videos like this, you can press the subscribe button down below or this might be the last time that you ever see any of the videos of this channel. I love you all so much. Stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace.